Hey guys, how are you all today? I hope you're all tickety-boo. I'm so excited because today I'm trying a new veg. Actually, I'm always excited, but that's beside the point. So today I'm gonna to grow, not grow, sow some sweet corn, which I've never done before because I don't like sweet corn. Ah! I know I can imagine a million people thinking I must be mad for not liking sweet corn. There's very few veg I don't really care for. Um, sweet corn and monge too, and that's pretty much it. So why am I growing sweet corn if I don't like it? Well, because this one is specifically for popping. I'm just gonna show you the packet. <laughs> it's not an official packet. So these seeds have been sent to me uh, by Michelle. Thank you so much. Um, and I just thought actually, to grow something that I can have as a little snack food would be a really good idea because I think I was mentioning in the April tour, you know, if it's eight o'clock in the evening and I fancy a quick little snack, the last thing I want to be doing is spending half an hour in the kitchen cooking, preparing food. Whereas I can come in five minutes later to have a nice little bowl of popcorn. So I'm gonna give them a go. Now, the thing I love about gardening is just continuing to learn all the time. I learn from you guys, we learn from each other, I learn from other plot holders. I don't know the first thing about growing sweet corn, so I've done a little bit of research. Now, from what I've learned, they don't like their roots to be disturbed. Fine, I will plant them in my paper pots because then once they're established and I put them into the ground, I won't be disturbing the roots, the paper pots will disintegrate, the roots will spread. What I don't know and what I've not been able to find out is, and because I've never grown it, I've never taken the plants out at the end of the season to see, is what their root system is like. So I'm kind of trying to apply a bit of logic here. I'm thinking that they're normally quite a tall plant, so I'm imagining they're gonna have a longish root. So I've decided to do them in um, long paper pots and a couple of loo roll in, insides. It may be actually that as a big plant their roots spread sideways. I have no idea. If they go sideways, hopefully the paper pots won't be an issue because they'll disintegrate in the ground and the roots can spread sideways. If they're like a nice long root, well hopefully that long root can get established in these longer paper pots. So this variety is called Glass Gem Corn and I just want to see if I can angle this down so you can have a look. They're going to go flying now, aren't they? So they're, um, yeah, they're like little jewels, aren't they? Greys, blacks, slight yellow tinge. Not like the normal popping corn you see in the shops, which is yellow. Um, the other thing I've done because like I said because I've not grown it before when I got the seeds out of the envelope I thought wow they're really quite they're obviously dry and they're tough so with half of them I've given them a soak overnight just to see if that helps them get going I don't know if that will work so I'm going to do half and half and we'll see where we get um what I love about these is this is seed that Michelle has grown her own plants and saved seed and then passed it on to me, which is something I, I just love so much. And I think we allotmenteers and community gardeners, I think this is something we do a huge amount of. And I was thinking about this the other day, I was thinking in the last few years, couple of years even, there seems to be within the commercial seed market, this kind of buzzword of, ooh, heritage, heirloom, all these kind of fancy pants things, they stick heritage or heirloom on the seed packet and charge five times as much for it. And actually, these are all things that I think most of us are growing anyway and sharing around. So yay to the allotmenteers and yay to the community gardeners who are growing these veg, sharing them with their friends and keeping these varieties going. This glass gem corn, I don't know, It, I think it's actually a newish variety. But I, the point I'm trying to make is that there are so many things we grow which in some cases are actually quite hard to find commercially, if at all. Um, 
so yeah keep growing keep saving seed and keep sharing them so come on let's get on with them getting these in let's have a little look so as you can see they're not hugely long the pots I've made but normally I'd make paper pots to about here so hopefully that'll give them a bit of length and actually it was a bit fiddly to make them really long because I couldn't then pull the paper pot a bit out so I'm just going to sew one in each pot and then hopefully as they grow actually I'm going to just put them on the top for now so I can see which ones I've done as they grow they'll be happy in there undisturbed and then <laughs> if they if they grow if the seeds produce then as I say the whole thing can go in the ground the one thing I do know from other people who grow sweet corn on site is that we want to plant them in a block rather than in a row because this helps with the pollination. They're wind pollinators as opposed to the bees or the insects. So as the wind catches on their pollen, it drops down onto the tassels, which is why you sometimes see people giving their sweet corn a bit of a shake. And you may remember over the years in previous videos, I have actually when I'm looking after other people's plots in the summer and watering for them, go round to their sweet corn and give it a bit of a shake. Okay, this is fiddly with the wet ones. I've no idea whether this is the right thing to do, but, um, you know, experiment. This isn't one of my absolutely crucial, it must work, I must have them crops so I'm happy to do a little bit of experimenting. Yay! It's a kind of funny time of year at the moment because it's so warm. It's unseasonably warm. It feels like everything is getting a bit sort of late and a bit behind. Hang on, I'm just going to wash my fingers. Um, Yeah, it feels like I'm a bit tardy with my jobs. But actually, I was just looking at the um, the forecast for the week ahead. And we're actually getting down to three degrees or so at night, which is pretty chilly for these little plants. Obviously not the sweet corn at the moment. The All the seeds I planted back in... When did I plant them? Early February the pelagonians, the celeriac and the sweet peppers, they're all racing away and I actually need the space on the windowsill now for these things. So I was thinking, do I dare take those plants down to the kitchen garden and put them in the cold frame? Ah, oh, it's such a dilemma, isn't it? It's that kind of dare. <laughs> that dare with mother nature. The cold frame is going down to about five or six degrees each night. And I just think that's probably still a bit too cold for the, um, for the celeriac in particular, which obviously has been used to about 20 degrees minimum in the windowsill, because it's a south facing window and it stays really warm. So, I might have to have a little rethink and put them somewhere else. Because, like I say, I need space for these sweet corn. And then in a couple of weeks, I'll be sowing all my squash indoors and all my cucumber indoors. The reason I'm doing it indoors is because last year I sowed them in the cold frame and the whole lot were held out by mice. Pesky, pesky, naughty mice. So I'll give those good um, watering in a minute. But I just wanted, <coughs> there's that frog again. I just wanted to say something about um, the, the seed suppliers I use because I get asked about it quite often, well, regularly. So for years, I've got the catalogue here. So for years I've been using the Organic Gardening catalogue people. You can get a paper copy, but it's all online as well. Um, I know probably I shouldn't have a paper copy, save paper, however, I 
in terms of just sort of reading and browsing, I find it really hard to just read and browse on the computer because I, I can't mark the computer, I can't, you know, turn the corner down. So they've got a pretty good range and that's been really good for me over the last sort of, I don't know, four or five years I've had the, the allotment. So recently, so last year I think it was, I started to look at, now I haven't got a catalogue, but I'm just going to show you the little packet. This company, the Real Seed catalogue, is it Real Seed catalogue? Yeah, Real Seed catalogue. Um, I don't know what I've done with my catalogue. This is a UK based company and one of the reasons I was drawn to it, I found them when I was looking for quinoa. What I like about this company is everything's grown in the UK, so therefore it should be acclimatised to us here. I was looking for the quinoa, found it, brilliant. Um, they described it as being um, robust in their wet and windy Wales where it's grown, so I thought it'll do fine here. And then I started looking at sweet peppers, because I do like sweet peppers in soups and salads and things. And they've developed this one. What's it say? Yeah, it's originally developed and grown in 1989, but it's been developed and grown again in the UK. So normally you would think of sweet bell peppers as being something you have to grow in a greenhouse, conservatory, that sort of thing. But this one is supposedly okay to grow outside in the UK. So having looked for the quinoa, I then found a few other things and the more I read about the company and their growing conditions, their ethics, that sort of thing, the more I like them. So I think as the years go by, obviously I'm still trying to save as much of my own seed as possible, but I'll be looking at these guys a bit more. And then finally, um, this is someone else I've recently come across. I don't quite understand the labelling because I had it originally through Stormy Hall Seeds. So it says in tiny letters at the bottom, Stormy Hall Seeds, and then in big letters, the seedcooperative.org.uk. Have a little look online. What I love about this one is, it's very simple, there's no, there's no flashy pictures, but what I like is, I'm going to just have a glass off a sec, Next to each of the each of the veggie selections, you see here there are symbols, and these let us know to which organic standards they've been grown. There's also this little code, which you go back to the front and you find it, and that sort of well, it explains to you where that seed has been grown and developed. So again. Uh, you can look and check. So there's a couple of Dutch ones, there's one in Switzerland, but they're mostly British. So again, it's that thing of buying seed that's been bred and grown in the UK, hopefully means that it's going to be well acclimatised. Having said that, our weather <laughs> seems to be changing. You know, we're in the middle of April, we should be having April showers for our May flowers. We haven't had a drop of rain for four weeks now, which is a bit weird. We can sometimes have really wet summers and then a great long dry period. So yeah, I think when you're, you know, when you're looking around for seed companies, I think it's best to maybe try and get a seed from as close to your area as possible so that they're acclimatised to your specific I know that's probably even more important say in somewhere like North America where you have your different growing zones which I don't understand but I think it's something to do with the weather anyway they're my lovely seed companies my sweet corner in I've got so much sowing still to do so I'm going to crack on with all of that I shall say cheerio to you all for now and I will catch up with you really soon. I think the next jobs are going to be tomatoes, celeriac, then like I say get the squash in and the cucumbers. Meanwhile back in the garden there's a last little bit of digging to do to get that new prepare area prepared for me to grow my vertical squash. Small area so I'm gonna go vertical uh, but generally speaking I'm just beside myself with it. <laughs> <laughs> the excitement for it all and I'm just like come on bring it on bring it on 
before you know it'll be autumn and we'll be taking everything down again after this long long wait of winter so stay well happy gardening happy sewing happy snow melting for those who've still got snow i'm hearing people have still got snow that's crazy cheerio for now we'll catch up again soon in the meantime take care and happy gardening